Hi, HCA team. This is Sherry, just coming to you with a little in-service about our EV1000. Um, we're gonna go over this step-by-step step so we can get a simplified process so that everybody can be doing this uh, the recommended way. Edwards Life Science came out today and they gave us some tips and tricks on how to use the EV1000. First of all, if anybody doesn't know, make sure it's plugged in um, because they do turn on fairly quickly. Then the on button is right here in the back. We're just gonna turn it on. Once we're on, we're gonna wait for the home screen to open up. Let me come over here. As this home screen opens up, remember that you guys wanna have your orange sheet of paper with you at the bedside because we do wanna be documenting our stuff right here. When our sepsis is being activated, we wanna make sure we fill out this box here, our date, our triage time, who called the code sepsis, um, if we was paged overhead, which doctor's on board, and then who our little team is helping out with the code sepsis, okay? Um, also, we're making sure that we're documenting what triggered our code sepsis, okay? Um, was this just a, <clears throat> uh, a SERS? Do we have an inspection? I mean, an infection, sorry. Or are we actually dropping down to severe sepsis, okay? In addition to that, we're gonna be drawing labs, starting our IV, and while we're drawing the labs, we wanna be getting our POC lactic. Super, super important, guys, okay? We wanna make sure that we're getting that POC lactic. We wanna be, we wanna be looking at um, both our labs, our blood pressure, and it's really critical. Not only do we look at our systolic blood pressure less than 90, because maybe we have a systolic that's 95, but our MAP less than 65. So big deal. Look at our maps also. If our map is less than 65, um, we wanna be doing our code sepsis, okay? While we're waiting for that to turn on, we're going to be getting out our little handy tool. This will be out at the patient. We want to be measuring, okay? So we like to keep the little monitor like in the little middle of the finger here. So we would put this tool on as such. We're going to tighten it really tight and we're going to see what, oops, if you don't break it, what color it lies on. So this shows that I'm a blue, okay? So with that being said, that's a blue is a medium. So we go to our little package here and we find so it looks like our machine has come on. I picked up my blue one because it correlated with my measurement. Um, on this thing, you're gonna see two green lines with two arrows, signifying that that's where the finger is gonna go, okay? So my finger is gonna, I'm gonna turn this over. My finger, there's a little finger. Your finger goes the same way as the picture, okay? Make sure my finger's in the two blue lines. It's going this way. Close it up. Okay. There we go, we'll put this on the back for now. So let me program this while we're waiting. We wanna make sure that we have the accurate data, okay? And this is measured data, this is not stated, okay? Especially, um, be, it's really, really important, just like your code strokes, anything like that, okay? So we're putting all these in, um, and it does matter if it's male or female, so we'll just pick <clears throat> where we're going. And then from here, we're gonna start now with our, um, hold on one second, home, and it takes you to this screen, okay? So now here, we're gonna connect our device. We have this big clunker. Okay, we're gonna plug this one in to this one. Match the shapes, it only goes one way. Okay, the light's green, green is good. After that, we're gonna take these two pieces because we need to zero our device before we move any further, okay? Hence the zero. These are the only two things on this whole monitor that have zeros, zero to zero, okay? Once we have zero to zero, Push that right there. We're gonna push zero. Yay, we're good, okay? So now that we have the zero to zero, this little guy goes right here on the finger, the only one that can clip in like that, and then this is gonna go right here on your patient. Super important to make sure that this is on and stays on while we are measuring. Sometimes if the patients move around and it falls off, you're not gonna get an accurate reading there, okay? Then. Ideally, we would like to put this right here and just kind of help them keep their arm here. This is the best way to get your um, reading the quickest, okay? So I'm gonna slowly turn. Now, when we're gonna push start right here, we wanna be looking at this little Z or staircase or whatever you wanna call it. It needs to be green, not red, not yellow, because that's when we actually get the correct stroke volume. So we're gonna press this. It's pumping up on my finger. I'm making sure everything's holding close right here. Now this, on average, it's been taking about mm, a minute 45 to two minutes, okay? 
So you do have to stay in your patient's room. We do need to see what this is. So just hang out for a minute, 45, two minutes till we get the right reading. Because if you get a yellow Z or it doesn't go off right, we, we gotta get the right one. So this, see how it's yellow or white? That's not the right reading. This number is not correct. The green little Z thing that you could see. So we're gonna switch over screens. And because we have the green, we want to be going, we're gonna go home first. So we push the little home button. Okay, and then oh, it went on that one. And then we're gonna go to this screen up here. So this is the one, two second from the left screen. Okay, and normally we were going to this one, but we're actually gonna use this tool. So Edwards Life Science um, is telling us the best practice is to go on this tool. Okay, and I can stop my little cuff right now. So I'm gonna push stop right there so I can take it off. Um, well, I'm not gonna take it off. I'll just undo it so my finger's not turning purple. So we got our first stroke volume number. This is the number that we are gonna be placing on our orange paper, okay, as our initial, um, <clears throat> excuse me, stroke volume time SV1. This is the stroke volume, hence before fluid administration, okay? So um, if the docs are ordering the 500 mLs, we wanna get this on your patient ASAP so that we can get a baseline starting point, okay? This is where we can document this so that after the bolus goes in, we have the next stroke volume so we can see do we still need to continue fluids after the 500 do we need to stop so i'm going to show you how we can get to that okay so here we're going to put this little blue uh triangle upside down triangle we're going to check it okay and then we're going to be going to our crystal wave fluid and then depending on usually it's our 500 ml bolus okay that we're starting with okay if for some reason they order something different you're going to check that so we're going to go 500 ml and we're going to push go okay when we do that, we get this first little blue triangle, okay, for our stroke volume. So now we wait, our fluids are infusing, um, the patient's there, we're monitoring their blood pressure. Um, now we're just, we're charting on the patient, okay? So typically the fluid should go in in about 10 minutes, maybe 15 if it's a smaller gauge, hopefully we've got a good, uh, good size gauge and they weren't a hard stick. Okay, so now let's say our fluids are completed. We're gonna come back into the patient room, okay? And again, we wanna make sure our monitor is on them because by now they've probably moved. This little device, like it did with me, fell off. So we wanna make sure it's back where it's supposed to be, okay? So we're gonna plug, clip it back on, I should say, right here, okay? We're gonna make sure we put this right on their arm again, and we're gonna start our little uh, measurement once again, okay? So again, now we stay on this home screen, and we're gonna just push start. So it's inflating on my finger, we're going. And again, the measurement's gonna take around two minutes. So uh, we wanna wait till we get the little green uh, Z step stool or whatever. And then we're gonna eventually, hopefully get another little blue try. So we got our second little green step stool. So now this is our second stroke volume number that we're gonna be recording on the orange paper, hence. This is going to be our second stroke volume. This was after the bolus, and then this is our time that we would be getting, you know, from this little machine. So <clears throat> now we need to know, okay, we have, we had our baseline, the little blue arrow. Now we did our bolus. Now we're going to have the little second stroke volume. So the question is, do we get more fluids or do we not get more fluids? You know, the 30 ml per kilo, the, the liter, this is what we're going to, we're going to go to the little um, blue triangle. We're going to go to custom event and we're going to stop because our fluid stopped, they were done, and this is gonna generate another <clears throat> blue arrow, okay? Go. Perfect, let me take this little device off real quick so I can measure. So now we have our baseline, our fluids went in here, and now we have our, where uh, the stroke volume after our bolus. Okay, so now we have two little triangles. So we're taking these little number, these little lines, and we're gonna be moving them over to where they're gonna meet each meet each little triangle. Okay, once we have them over the triangles, oops, sorry. Once we have them over the triangles, um, as we're moving it, we're gonna come up to this number, which we're gonna see here. And this one, like you could see, it's less than 3%. So, because it's not 10% or greater, that means we're good. We're good on the fluids, um, so we don't wanna be giving the patient any more fluids. So, if that number was greater than 10%, that's where we're gonna be starting our um, 
<clears throat> 30 ml per kilo bolus um, because the patient needs more fluids, okay? Um, so this, it calculates it for you. You see your other stroke volume there, your second stroke volume, and that's what we're gonna be using, guys, okay? Um, so this is how we want to be using our EV1000. Um, hopefully this was helpful for you.